I am Kevin Whalem. I am a recording artist, specifically in the genres of jazz, uh, R&B, and gospel. I can remember in, in my first week of college, my uncle, who, who's passed away, who's also an incredible musician, who was the director for 35 years of the Morehouse College Glee Club, would take all of his new freshman members to a small town in Georgia called Hampton, Georgia. And he would take us to a small church in the middle of nowhere in Hampton that had wooden floors that was the size of maybe, I'll say it was maybe 20 by 40 tops, the whole church, the entire church. And there was a, there was, there was a seriously elderly uh, membership there, all African American, and it was a Baptist church. And we would come in from, you know, freshmen, we, we're just meeting each other that week, so we certainly don't know each other that well, but we were 17, 18, 19 years old, and out of respect, we don't even try to sit down, there's no room, so we're standing behind everybody, lining the walls around the church. And there's a line of chairs across the front of the church with maybe five or six seats. And all of those people, men and women, had to be, no, no one in that group could be younger than 75 on up to maybe 90 something. And they're sitting there in their Sunday best, you know, the, the older gentleman with the white socks, you know, and the suspenders on. And, and they get up and they are imparting to us a way of doing things before education came along. And, you know, when we started doing things differently, when they could not read way back in the early, early days, when they couldn't read or write, they would draw shapes. It's called shape note singing. Circles, squares, triangles, rectangles that would denote the solfege. Do, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And those were their notes. That's how they knew what note to sing when they were singing their hymns. And they would line up the, 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 the let's call him a praise team leader. That's what we would call him today. Would, would get them do, do, do. And they would all tune to whatever note he was singing. Do, 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 re, do, re, do, re, do, re, do. And he's giving them their parts. And he would go, one, two, three. Dum, 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 run, da, run, da, stone, da, hand, and so, stay, da, da. And they're just singing lyrics. I can't remember what they were singing, but they were singing the purest music you've ever heard. I get emotional when I think about it. They were singing from, from their grandparents who had taught them this way of singing and passing along this music. And it really, it affected us to the point where everybody in the room was crying because you're like, this is where we came from. This is who we are. This is how we know what we gotta go do now. And it just, it, you know, excuse my tears, but it's, that's the passion that I carry with me now. I have to respect the music. I have to respect the, the slavery-born uh, hymns, the slavery-born painful, anguished cries and yells of our ancestors that turned into African-American music. That's why. We've got to carry it on in the right way. We've got to reach those kids that are doing it a disservice by the vulgarity. And we've got to show them, hey, this is who you are. Check this out. This is where you came from. You got to respect that. We, we demand that you respect it. My music matters because I respect the music that came before me.